So according to me, before the prevalence of natal astrology, it was Prashna, Prashna Shastra. Prashna astrology, what is now known as Horary astrology, it was in prevalence. Right? Because natal horoscopy comes with the uses of ascendant. Whereas Prashna is without any ascendant also. But in today's time, what is the relevance of Prashna Jyotish? The relevance of Prashna Jyotish is the birth horoscope indicates a long future. Horoscope indicates from birth to death. Loka Yatra Prigyanam are the two purposes of Ayush and Loka Yatra Prigyanam are the two purposes of natal astrology. So from birth to death, everything is seen through the birth horoscope. Now in this, to see small things becomes sometimes difficult. What happens? You can see a horoscope and using that horoscope, you can tell the description of life partner. But if the person asks you, will I get married to this person? Showing you a photo or will say that, will I get married to my boyfriend or girlfriend? How can you answer this? From the horoscope, you see the description of the spouse. You see the marriage time and you see everything. But this person, you don't see a photo. To answer the same Prashna comes as your savior. One thing is, though using the Shantar, the Shah, etc., you can answer that one may get married to the boyfriend, girlfriend also, depending on the love marriage combinations. But from natal horoscope, your answer will be may only, probability. Whereas if you go to Prashna Shastra, in Prashna, answering yes or no query, yes, you will get married to this person. No, you will not get married to this person. becomes very easy and simple. And with Prashna, you can predict the same with 100% accuracy and confidence also for this particular reason. Prashna becomes very important. What is a Prashna? Prashna is nothing but a horoscope casted for the moment when the question is asked. So you take your place of sitting, you take your time, you take everything of yourself because you are casting the Prashna chart and you make a horoscope. Based on that horoscope, you read and you predict. Now what happens in Prashna is also, Prashna also tells you the past. Prashna also tells you the present situation. Prashna also tells you the future. Prashna, those whoever people, whoever is skeptical about the efficiency of astrology, for them Prashna is a very, very big answer that when you come and ask something, it tells you about past, present and future, everything. Future of the question, your present scenario and what have happened in the past. Related to that particular question or related to everything which is a very strong proof that even the thoughts that you are having in your mind is astrologically channeled and is astrologically connected. Hence the working of astrology goes without any doubt. In fact, there is a Sanskrit shloka which says that every Shastra can produce confusion. But Jyotisham Pratyaksham Shastram Jatra Suri Chandra Sakshino But Jyotish Astrology is a science whose result can be seen through one's own eyes as one can see sun and moon. Right? And Prashna gives you that particular confidence. For this particular reason, anyone who is practicing astrology, it is very essential for them to learn Prashna. And for this particular reason, from the next Friday, I am going to teach a 10 class exclusive course on Prashna where I will be teaching 8 plus methods of or any astrology or what is known as Prashna. Eight plus methods because every method have their own advantage. Right? So as a practitioner, you should, to answer any query, you should be using the system which is most simple and most efficient for that type of question. For this particular reason, I will be teaching eight plus, eight plus methods in the course. And if you are serious about learning astrology, you should join the course without any doubt. That course will be life-changing and even a beginner in Prashna after learning this, that course will be an expert. In this system, very important thing is one of the system out of the eight systems that I am going to teach is the traditional method of looking at Prashna. And when you look at Prashna using the traditional method Gulik, the planet Gulik becomes very, very powerful. So what basically happens a day is divided into eight portions. The eighth portion is without any Lord. And the remaining seven portions are ruled by the planet, Sun, Moon, Mars, Mercury, Jupiter, Venus, Saturn in the order. 
the saturn's part the starting of the saturn's part is the part of guli so basically what happens you take the time from sunrise to sunset divided into eight equal portions and based on the weekday you decide which part belongs to sun which which parts belong to saturn at this particular time because you will divide the 12 hours or whatever the value is to eight uh, eight parts there will be one particular part which is related to saturn and it will come at a particular point of time that particular point will rise at a particular point of time you make a horoscope for that moment and whatever the ascendant is in whichever rashi it is falling you place the position of gulik and based on that a query is generally answered for a particular example if you see this horoscope in jagannath aura it is very easy to find right here you can see the position of gulik 27 libra 16 though the ascendant is leo but the gulik falls in libra right so it is indicated by gk in the horoscope your calculation have to be correct you have to go preferences related to calculation upagraha calculation option and in that you should select gulik rises at the beginning of saturn's portion and day and night starts at sunrise and sunset respectively okay this gives you the position of gulik and you know that currently gulik is in 27 degree libra in the kerala system of astrology this gulik becomes very important in analysis of a prashna chart there are few things related to gulik gulik is very malefic sun saturn rahu mars all four of these malefics conjoined together in their maleficence are nowhere equal to the maleficence of singular gulik so the basic thumb point is in whichever house gulik is situated in the beneficence of that house is completely destroyed now you see if it is a house related to question if someone is asking a query related to marriage and this gulik you see is situated in the 7th house is connected with venus is connected with 7th lord then you know that the prospects of marriage are very bad in that particular scenario if the person is asking that will i get married you should say no there is problem this gulik generally indicates badha if it is related to the sustenance of marriage then you you should predict that the marriage is not going to sustain even if the question is related to some other matter but you see that gulik is connected to 7th house 7th lord or venus you should say you should forewarn the person though the native may have not, may not have asked but still you should forewarn that person that there can be issues related to marriage you have to be careful about it so the basic foremost important point is gulik in different houses indicates the problematic areas even if you see a like you know a prashna is in front of you a native have asked your question and he have not clarified the native have came with a query but he have not exactly clarified his query and you want to know what is there in his mind what is disturbing the native what can be his possible question for that you should see gulik and the house of the gulik the rashi of the gulik and the other planets connected with gulik conjoined with gulik aspecting gulik right gulik will have no aspect though in kerala system it is taken that gulik aspects the seventh house from its placement but according to my experience i have not seen it working so planet conjoined with gulik planet aspecting gulik the rashi of the gulik and the house of the gulik will indicate the disturbance the problem the tension that is there in the mind of native using which you can also assess the question that the native is here to ask along with this as i have already very clearly told that gulik indicates the problem area if the gulik is in the first house or sixth house or connected with the first lord or sixth lord it indicates health related issue that is going there or health related issue that is going to come now whether health related issue is already already there or the health related issue is going to come how will you find that so for that particular reason you have to take one particular thing into consideration atit phala arudam is a shloka that is very popular in kerala system of astrology so arud have to be taken now to take this arud there are multiple methods to take the arud but the simplest one will be you ask the native any number between 1 to 12 and let the native choose any number whatever number he chooses take that as arud rashi for example if the native have chosen number 
फिफ्थ राशि इज लियो टेक आरूढ़ राशि इज लियो इफ गुली इज कनेक्टेड टू लग्ना और सिक्स हाउस वाइल ऑल्सो कनेक्टेड टू आरूढ़ इट इंडिकेट पास्ट दैट मीन्स द हेल्थ प्रॉब्लम हैव ऑलरेडी हैपन्ड देयर एंड द पर्सन इज इन ट्रेवल बिकॉज ऑफ द हेल्थ प्रॉब्लम अदरवाइज इफ इट इज नॉट कनेक्टेड टू आरूढ़ आरूढ़ राशि लॉर्ड ऑफ आरूढ़ राशि देन द प्रॉब्लम इज गोइंग टू कम इन फ्यूचर द पर्सन इज टू बी केयरफुल अबाउट not only this lagna also indicates loss of name fame prestige owner and authority same is the gulik in the 10th house our gulik in the 10th house somehow may be taken good but when gulik is in the ascendant it indicates health related issues mental problems accidents wounds attacks loss of prestige defamation bad name fame and status is the case when gulik is connected to the second house it indicates financial problems problems in families death of some near and dear ones specifically gulik in the second house is very problematic because it is because it also indicates devo bada generally when you see gulik in the second house you should know that this person have done multiple remedies but no remedy seem to be working for this native he is suffering through multiple issues he have visited multiple temples but nothing is yielding him any result at all gulik in the third house though it indicates problem with respect to siblings but otherwise it is very good when gulik is there in the third house the effort of the native will be fruitful in that particular scenario you see suppose the person is asking about marriage he is looking for life partner and in the prashna you see gulik in the third house you should say that you will be successful in your endeavors that mean you will quickly get married gulik in the fourth house is very bad lack of happiness it does indicate fourth house becomes very important in prashna in any type of prashna if you have seen gulik in the fourth house it is a sure shot combination in which one should predict failure in that particular scenario whatever the prashna that the native have asked the result should be negative <clears throat> and there will be no good result from that particular prashna it is a very problematic scenario gulik in the fifth house indicates problem related to education and problem related to child problem related to stomach gulik in the sixth house do gives disease <clears throat> and struggle in life problem with respect to enemies person is getting disturbed very often but in long term it indicates a success gulik in the seventh house generally indicates wounds attacks accidents problem in marriage problem in foreign travel in such prashna if the person is planning for a change or planning for a travel he should quickly drop this particular idea when guli goes to the 8th house it indicates badha it indicates that the black magic is done over the native the native should be careful <clears throat> and generally guli in the 8th house also indicates mental maladies mental disturbance the person being very tormented the person being in almost a condition of depression guli in the 8th house also indicate that the last one week have been very bad for the native and in the last one week person have been in trouble every day in and out and there is there have been no success in any endeavor in the last one weeks the condition of the person is very bad he is feeling failure as nothing is working since last one week or one month depending on how much affliction this guli is having guli in the 9th house is once again a deva badha in such scenario the person is feeling unfortunate problems related to government problems related to authority problems related to people situated at higher places in society will be there and the another problem with gulik in the ninth house is that multiple visit to multiple temples doing multiple remedies in fact is not working for the native in such scenario normal remedies will not work and you have to give a highly specialized remedy for that native it also indicates that for the next one year nothing is going to work has the person should continue to do remedy but should keep patience and realize the fact that whatever is going to work will work after one year only if colleague is there in the 10th house you know 10th house is for name fame prestige profession authority so there is challenge to authority person is struggling to have name fame status recognition and there can be malice thrown on the person also there can be defamation as well there will be problems related to profession because the 10th house is significant for all of that but 10th is an upche house 
This is good for malefics. Hence, when Gulik is there in the 10th house, though the person is suffering from these issues up to this extent, but in future, there will be good. But in future, success will be there. Just the person have to be patient, patent, patient. And the person have to keep calm and keep working in the right direction. You Next is the 11,000, 11,000 income, gain of things, money, fulfillment of wishes and desires. So when Gulik is there, now you see third house, sixth house, 10th house, 11th house, these are Upche houses, Gulik is good there. But because it is the current Prashna that you have, you are looking that you have casted right now, it indicates good in future. Whereas in past, there should be problem related to these particular areas. So leaving Arud aside, this is another important point. Upche houses which indicate past in Prashna is what is my opinion on this. So because 11,000 indicate income, there should be problem in income. Because 11,000 indicates awards, accolades and owner, the person is struggling to get, get recognized or the person may have been forced to leave some position in life. The wishes of fulfillment and desire is becoming an issue. And not only this, because it is, it also indicates children because 11th house also indicates children problem related to progeny will be there. And because it is fulfillment of wishes and desires from the last one year, nothing seems to be working in the native's life will be the case when Gulik is there in the 11th house. 12th house, as you know, is the house of expenditure. Gulika goes into the 12th house. It indicates huge expenditure, great financial losses. And this expenditure is actually loss. So recent loss of some near and dear one Gulik indicates and the problem because of the same it also indicates. Not only this 12th house also indicates a solace and because Gulik is there it will indicate that people are not letting the native work. He wants solace but people is constantly disturbing him which is making him disturbed and which is creating problems in his life. 12th house also indicates hospitals and it does indicate Gulik in the 12th house does indicate that there is a lot of health issues. And because 12th house also indicates instability, Gulik in the 12th house does indicate that the life of the native is uh, is quite unstable since last one year. And expenditure, etc. will be there. So first point is, except for the Upchai houses, Gulik is never good in any house. Whenever you see a Prashna chart, you have to predict bad related to the house where Gulik is situated in. Right, that is a basic thumb rule. For example, with respect to the 10th house, because it indicates profession, name, fame, status, recognition, Gulik is there in Prashna. In the past, there should be problems into these areas, but in near future, there will be success. There will be name, fame, recognition, status, authority. These things person will gain in future. In other houses, Gulik is generally always bad, except for one particular case when the dispositor, the Rashi Lord of Gulik is powerful. If the Rashi Lord of Gulik is powerful, for example, you say Gulik is situated in the ninth house, so that I have told you, ninth house indicates fortune. Gulik is there in the ninth house; it indicates that the fortune is struck. Nothing is working for the native. This will be true for the past if the dispositor, if the Rashi Lord of Gulik, that is the ninth Lord here, is powerful. If the ninth Lord is powerful, now there can be two things: the ninth Lord is powerful in any house. Gulik is in the ninth house, there will be problem in fortune, but the ninth lord is powerful in any house in that particular scenario. It indicates that if you do remedy related to the ninth lord, the maleficence of Gulik will be subdued and success will be there. One should patiently do remedies for four to six months in this particular case and in future things will be good. In fact, in Kerala Prashna, a very important golden principle is to making a Prashna for the remedy that is suggested to check whether the remedy will work or not in how much time it will work. Hence learning it becomes even more important. Another scenario is when Gulik is there in the ninth house and ninth Lord is powerful in Kendra houses, one, four, ten house. In that particular scenario, it indicates a Raja Yoga. It does indicate that there have been problems related to ninth house, luck, God, fortune, father, authority in the past. But in near future, this problem will go. And in fact, Rajyog related to ninth house, which means the person get becoming fortunate, the person getting support of government gurus and elder people, the person earning through his luck will be there in future. In these two particular scenario, Gulik becomes good in any other house. And except for that, third, sixth, tenth, eleventh house, Gulik is always good in. 
there is one more last point that I will want to put here. Guli is very, very important. In Prashna, if you have to see black magic, not only black magic, any serious issue, if you have to see, you have to check Bada. For movable Rashi, Aries, Cancer, Libra, Capricorn, 11th house, Lord is Bada. For fixed ascendant, Leo, Taurus, Aquarius, Scorpio, 9th house, Lord is Bada. For dual ascendant, Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius, Pisces, 7th house, Lord is Bada. If this Badak is there with Gulik in any house except for the 12th house, if the Badak is there in any house related to Gulik, it does indicate Bada, it does indicate black magic, it does indicate a major malefic result which is stopping, which is stopping the progress of the native. This goes with this goes like black magic where everything is stopped, nothing is working, and even the person is not able to keep sane. The person is not able to think properly. His thinking have also became clouded. So this particular scenario, if it is there, that someone was doing very good. But all of a sudden, despite giving his 100%, despite doing his best, things stopped working. Slowly, slowly, the person also started becoming depressed. He also started having mental tension and pressure. And because of that mental tension and pressure, he is not able to think the way he used to think before. Along with this, he is also having some health problems. If all these three things are happening simultaneously, you should know that there is Badha, you should know that there is Kritya, you should know that there is Black Magic. And it is there, it is confirmed by in the Prashna chart when you see that Gulik is there with the Badhak Lord. If Gulik is there with Badhak Lord in any house except for the 12th house, it indicates normal Badha, which will be pacified if one does the remedy of the 10th Lord. Why 10th Lord? Because 10th house indicates a success. So remedy of the 10th Lord should be done and the Shanti for Gulik should also be done and the Shanti of Gulik will be done by appeasing the planet who is the Lord of the Rashi where Gulik and the Badak is situated in. Even Badak expecting Gulik also indicates the same scenario. In that particular scenario where the Badak is with Gulik in 6th, 8th house, and third house also. When Badak is with Gulik in these bad houses, then the Kritya or the black magic is very, very strong. In that scenario, serious remedy should be taken. Otherwise, there can be issues. Now, this black magic is not necessarily done by other person only, sometime by mistake or by not knowing the person himself may commit something which is becoming a Badha, which is becoming a Kritya. For a particular example, if someone don't know how to behave in a temple, if someone don't know how to visit a temple and out of arrogance or out of anything, if they mistreat God or if they mistreat a temple, then Badha will be automatically there. This Badha is not done by any person, but this Badha is created by the gods, created by the demigods which protect that particular place, which protect that particular temple or which serve the meaning. Right, because it comes from Kerala. In Kerala, this thing is there. If someone goes to Sabrimala, there is a particular deity who protects everyone, every family member of the person who is visiting Sabrimala. So such small demigods may create issue because of your own ignorance also. Right, so it does indicate a great mistake which may have happened before and for that, some serious remedy needs to be done. Now, if, if any of you is suffering from any type of Kritya, there is Kritya Pahar Suktam from Vedas. I think Athar Veda it is. I'm not exact about Veda, which Veda, but it is from Veda. Kritya Pahar Suktam. You can chant it, you can read it, or you can appoint a priest to chant it for you for 1008 times. And this will help you get relief from Kritya, Abhichar, Black Magic or will relieve you from any sin. If you have seen that the person have done a sin mistakenly, then in, the, in that particular scenario, doing Siv Aparad Chamapan Stutram, every day yourself or appointing a group of priests to do it 1008 times for you, or just chanting Karacharan Kirtam Va Kakayajam Karmajam Va Sarvan Nayana Chama Va Manasam Va Pradam Vihitam Vihitam Va Sarva Meta Chamasu Jai Jai Karanavde Shri Mahadev Sambho Doing this mantra 108 times yourself, 
will relieve you from that particular mistake. And if you do this mantra once every day, then in that particular scenario, whatever mistake you do knowingly or unknowingly, that will be forgiven by the great Lord Shiva, who is our Guru, who is all of us. This is what I wanted to share with you. And more than 250, 300 such principles will be there in the 10 class Prashna course, which is starting from coming Friday, 24th of February. If you are serious about learning astrology and changing your life and the life of people around you, life of people who visit you, you should join that course on a priority basis.